Hello and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World with me, John Jordan. So we are doing it a little bit earlier than normal. Um, we're coming to the end of November um, and doing the most popular blockchain games um, <laughs> for, no for November um, a few days early because um, interesting stuff has been happening and um, I want to get this out before I um, am out for a couple of days. So um, this is looking at 2023 as a whole. These are the um, sort of three have been the three most popular games actually four now you can see but um in blue here we have alien worlds so at the start of the year about two hundred thousand daily active unique wallets all the data as ever from that radar so it's just looking every day and seeing how many unique wallets there are um so we can see uh so yeah it starts off to under two hundred thousand. now we're actually down here under a hundred thousand about seventy thousand i think um so there's a, obviously churn going on here, as with ev as ever, as we'll discuss a bit later. Um, with the, most of these games, we there's there's bots in there, so so we don't really know what percentage of these are real players and are bots. We don't really care, I suppose. Uh, but to some degree, um, the decline in this has been due to the decline in the sort of tokens underlying some of these games. So they're sort of less it's less uh, valuable for bots to bot them, um, and also they been also they all put measures in to try and stop bots so so to a degree it may be ironic that some of the decline here may be due to getting rid of bots <laughs> but anyway alien worlds um, in blue in red we have splinterlands again a similar um sort of uh, uh trajectory over the year so started off you know hit two hundred thousand, um and has come sort of all the way down um just over sort of 50 60 000 now um, although Splinterlands is having a um, its car, its new card set's coming out in December, so we'll see if that picks up any any um, uh, any sort of uh, players. Then um, we have Farmers World, which is in green, so it bobbles along here. Uh, there's a gap in the data here; I don't quite know <laughs> what that radar was doing there. Um, it comes back up really high, and there's sort of drop back down again to sort of where it, well, it's higher than it was because it was about fifty thousand. So the problem with Alien World, with Farmers World, is it's sort of uh, assumed to be a bit of a zombie game now, so the developers aren't developing it. So it's a bit unclear why people are playing it, but there we go. This is what the on-chain data tells us. The interesting bit here is is Pixels. So this is a, a game that was running on Polygon. It's now running on the uh, Ronin blockchain. And we can see sort of from nothing, um, obviously, we start tracking it on the Ronin blockchain when it launched, and it comes up very quickly up to um, over 100,000. So that, so let's um, try and see this in a bit more detail. So I've just broken this out for this November. It's the same data, same colours. Um, we can see here, like Pixel starts off with zero. It has it goes up to fifty thousand the first first weekend. For some reason, I don't know if that radar loses the data or, or they make some changes. Not quite sure. Uh, comes down um, and then it go, goes up again, and is now round about the uh, hundred thousand daily active unique wallets. Again, the developer has said that they know there's a bunch of um, bots. You know, maybe forty percent they're thinking of are, are, are bots. They're trying to put in some measures to sort of reduce that and make sure bots. The main reason for bots is the main reason you don't want a lot of bots is you don't want them extracting value. So there's been people complaining that bots are sort of claiming some of these um, rewards in the game, um, and so the developer obviously doesn't want um, sort of bot accounts to be collecting rewards. They want the players to be collecting the rewards. So so um, some um, stuff going on around that, and we can also see the same thing we've discussed before. Uh, so Alien Wars sort of coming down here, and actually in in uh, in November, um, you know, started off um, 130,000 has come down quite a lot to under 100,000. So um, again, I don't, uh, I don't know if that's bots or what's going on there, but, but a, f a fairly sort of strong decline. Uh, Splinterlands, slight um, increase, so under 50,000, up to, 100, uh, to over 50,000. I expect to see it probably going back up a bit as, as, as new cards are released. People will be collecting the cards that they bought and, and, and playing the game. So, um, and uh, Splint see, Splinterlands has sort of re, re sort of organised itself in recent months, so, so we'll see how that sort of kicks in got a new game mode to go live and stuff as well uh, and then farmers world just sort of um doing what it's doing okay so um i guess looking into december what's interesting is to see how how pixels does it sustain itself around this hundred thousand mark you know at the moment it is now the most popular blockchain game um as i as, as i do this video so it's it's um you know higher higher than everything else um obviously just uh within within a month and, and we sort of see that trajectories um in some other games so obviously we've moved from um, what was being considered a bear market, so that so crypto prices have, have been down, um, and now uh, crypto prices have clearly sort of um, gone up in terms of the big um, tokens like Bitcoin and Ethereum or ETH. Um, and uh, so generally, there's sort of more positivity, and and you see that reflected in some in the sort of in the uh, increased audience in some games, but not all games, interestingly. So 
next graph. So these are some games that um, you know have been around for a long, long time now, um, and and this is for the whole of 2023. But you can't really. I mean, they've gone up a bit. Um, so here we have Nine Chronicles in green, up to about four to sort of forty thousand. Um, so if we go back to this graph, so so this is a, obviously this is a much higher level. So if we look at the next graph, sort of would sit within this <laughs> this vertical line here because this is fifty thousand. Um, so so yeah, uh, Nine Chronicles is somewhere around here, forty thousand. Um, Upland in purple, just very sort of steady around the sort of twenty, just over twenty thousand. You know, it doesn't really go up or down. Um, and Axe Infinity, you know, is up from the start of the year at ten thousand, maybe up to sort of fifteen. So sometime peaks over twenty, um, but you know, it's not doubling even or you know ten xing um, or anything like that. So so it's interesting that we have sort of new games coming on like Pixels, which is on the same blockchain, same Ronin blockchain as Axe Infinity. Um, and that's seeing a lot of growth. Lots of people are suddenly interested in that game, but the sort of games that are, you know, have been have, have been out there for a while, have a lot of resources out there. Um, we haven't yet seen people onboarding back to those. So I guess that's the interesting thing when you have a sort of cyclic um, industry. Uh, you know, is it who who captures the growth? Is it new games coming on? There's loads of new games coming out. Is it those that are going to be either like the first ones to sort of um, you know claim a million? Um, sort of uh, players or are we going to see some of these older games which have been high and have come back down um that are still being worked on you know are they gonna sort of sort of um sort of regain their their luster so that's an interesting thing to look at here nothing's happening really at the moment uh particularly for nine chronicles so they just launched a new version of the game but i don't think that's being uh, measured by dat radar so um confusingly this is uh, this is I think this is the original version of nine chronicles which runs on a its own blockchain, um, and the new version of Nine Chronicles called Nine Chronicles M, which is for mobile, although you can play it on PC. But um, Nine Chronicles M runs on a totally, it's a fault, basically a fault version of the, of, of the original blockchain or a new version of the blockchain. So I don't think that radar doesn't seem to be tracking that yet. Um, they may be rolling those into these figures, um, uh, but I don't think so. So, so particularly keep an eye on Nine Chronicles, so it has just basically launched a new version of the game, um, which is much more accessible than the old version. So we would expect to see some growth there. Okay, the final um, graph here is some of these sort of um, uh, sort of newer products that have seen you know quite considerable growth. So Sweatcoin has been around for a while. It's not really a game. It's one of these move to earn apps, um, and you know you don't actually need any NFTs. You can just download the app from the app stores, and it sort of um, gives you coins, cryptocurrency, depending on how much you move. So if you sort of move. Um, you can, the, the, the amount of steps you do in a day, you can sort of claim some of these tokens. Um, can't really do anything much with the tokens at the moment. You can sort of stake them to, to get some rewards. Um, it's actually a sort of slightly complicated system where they have a, like an off-chain currency and a non-chain currency. And you can do different things. You can get sort of discounts with things and, and do some charity, give, sort of normally give them away to charity. And there is a, 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 like a small mini game in, in, in um, Sweatcoin, um, a sort of rhythm action game. Um, but we wouldn't really see this as a sort of traditional game. Um, Gamefly and uh, Moto Dex again, they're a little bit um, sort of lightweight. They're running both running on the Scale Network, which is a, a sort of Ethereum-based um, sort of scaling blockchain, um, which means you can do a lot of transactions um, cheaply. But I guess what we're looking at here is the sort of the growth. So this is from this is last three months, September, October, November. Basically, you know, Moto uh, Moto Dex starts out at zero, and you know this is up to. You know, almost, almost seventy-five thousand daily active unique wallets. So it's a sort of a, a sort of simple sort of motor racing decks sort of game. Um, very simple. It's more about the crypto than the than the game really. But you can see, you know, when you in in a more positive um, environment, um, almost, I would say almost almost any experience can can suddenly you know start growing tens of thousands of, of wallets a day. Again, level of bots in for these products we don't know. Um, something always to be aware of uh, and same for game game of fly which is a um a sort of cricket a sort of hyper casual sort of cricket game with some blockchain elements in there which is obviously more focused towards the indian market we've had the indian we've had the world cup the cricket world cup in india um so 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 stuff around that and again that's just gone very very quickly um up to over a hundred thousand you know over hundred twenty thousand at the moment so in some ways you know these 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 Sweatcoin and, and Game of Fly, 
you know, are over 100,000, which if we had them on, on this one here, you know, they would be the most popular blockchain games. Uh, I'm not listing them there because because they're not really sort of games in the sense, in the way that these products are games. Um, so there are, you know, there's a sort of definitional sort of thing going on here. You know, these are these are sort of more sort of hyper casual, tokenized game of gamified experiences rather than games but it's just sort of pointing out that um, really the, the trend here is some of these things are growing quite quickly now because there's the infrastructure to allow people to do on-chain activity um, cheaply um, and and in a more positive market we're going to start to see some of these games and apps I think doing quite big uh, numbers um, while the more established sort of games you know haven't uh, maybe because of the infrastructure or maybe because um, you know, people aren't interested in them anymore um, are not seeing that at the moment. I'd be able to, we expect that to change a little bit, but probably I would think for the next few months, the, a lot of the key growth will be coming from, from new games um, that are suddenly um, onboarding quite large audiences to these new sort of infrastructures. So anyway, we'll keep an eye on that. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.